can't believe it, but after five years, one of my favorite sneakers of the last decade is actually coming back. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 Triple White 2020. Perfect. This shoe actually first came out before I started my YouTube channel, like a whole year before my YouTube channel started. It's kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever officially reviewed this shoe before. I've owned it before. In fact, I think I've had like two or three pairs, but I've never actually reviewed it. So now five years later, we get the chance. First off, I want to thank Adidas for sending over this pair of sneakers early. I'm so stoked to have it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite pairs of sneakers. It's definitely one of my favorite pairs of Ultra Boost. And the fact that Adidas decided to gift me a pair is kind of crazy. So thank you guys so much for that. If you would like to grab a pair of the new 2020 Adidas Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0s in the triple white colorway they drop on May 17th for a retail price of 180 bucks. But getting into the sneaker itself, a lot of people have been calling this shoe a restock, which I don't think it is. I actually think it's a retro. Even though the shoe looks almost identical, the product code of the sneaker I believe is different. It also now has a continental outsole, which I don't believe the first triple white Ultra Boost had. I think the first one had those sort of weird rubber nubs. And the other change is that this new pair of Ultra Boosts actually come in this new Ultra Boost box, which kind of opens up diagonally which is interesting, but it's a completely different box than the box you used to get with the 2015 pair. So all of that leads me to believe that even though the sneaker looks almost identical, even though the materials are almost exactly the same, this version of the sneaker has just recently been produced. Back in 2015 and 2016, and actually 2017 for that matter, the Ultra Boost 1.0 in triple white was one of the most coveted Ultra Boost colorways, and there are a lot of reasons for that. The first is that because the Ultra Boost silhouette was so popular, every single Ultra Boost 1.0 colorway was really difficult to get, and when for a lot of money. The second is that this was the shoe that Kanye wore in that iconic stage jumping picture. I don't know what I was dealing with that, yikes. Okay, um, but yeah, so this is the shoe that he was wearing and anytime Kanye wears anything, usually that thing goes up in value. You could probably say that this was the first super hyped up Ultra Boost and because of that, it was going for a crazy amount of money. Now, obviously the Ultra Boost hype has died down, which for some people is a great thing because it allows them to get the ultra limited pairs that they wanted for decent prices. And even though the shoe isn't as hyped up as it once was, it's still one of my favorite sneakers. In fact, I've always said that the Ultra Boost is like my second favorite shoe behind the Air Jordan 1. So for me, even though it was only five years ago, there's still some pretty heavy nostalgia around this sneaker and the whole Boost era. This is a shoe that brings back a lot of memories and it reminds me a lot of the beginning of my channel. So I really love this sneaker for a lot of reasons, but there's a lot of memories tied to this shoe. But with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into this Ultra Boost 1.0. The front half of the upper of this shoe is made up completely of Prime Knit. And at the time when this shoe released, Prime Knit was still pretty hard to get. It's a super soft and stretchy knit and it really does feel like a pair of socks on your feet. On the toe of the shoe, as you can probably tell, you've got that iconic Ultra Boost 1.0 prime knit pattern. The ventilation holes sort of come together and create this arrow detail that points forward. Even though this shoe has been called the Triple White Ultra Boost 1.0, some of you may remember that if you look closely at the knit pattern, there's actually a lot of creams sort of woven in with the whites. That color woven in with the upper actually makes the upper match the boost a little bit better because the boost isn't perfectly white and this makes the upper a little bit less pristine white. As you move up in the shoe, you get to these flat white laces and then on the top of the tongue, or I guess the top of the ankle area, because this is a one piece booty construction, you actually have this mesh material. This textile mesh tongue area is padded really nicely and you also have the Adidas logo on this little tab in the center. Moving inside the shoe, you get to this super white sock liner which is really nicely padded and then rounding off the inside of the shoe, you get this white insole with actually the old Ultra Boost text printed on the heel. The reason I say the old logo printed on the heel is because on newer versions of the Ultra Boost, there's actually this sort of bubbly logo that they use in some of the newer pairs that in my opinion doesn't look as good and I just much prefer this sort of retro look. It's not really retro, but kind of retro. As for sizing and fit, this Ultra Boost 1.0 fits just like every other pair of Ultra Boost 1.0s. And as some of you may remember, the Ultra Boost 1.0s probably fit the tightest out of every pair of Ultra Boosts. The reason for that is that the Ultra Boost 1.0s are the only Ultra Boost to use this sort of textile mesh around the midfoot and the heel of the shoe. And because of that, there isn't as much give around the ankle and around the heel. So it's actually a little bit more difficult to get your foot into the sneaker and it's a little bit tighter around your heel. Even with that, I still think the shoe fits true to size and that's the size that I would 
recommend. However, if you've worn Ultraboost 1.0s before and you prefer a different size, I would go with that standard size that you usually go with. And of course, everyone's feet are different, so if you have the chance to try on a pair of Ultraboost 1.0s before you buy this pair, I would definitely suggest doing that to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. Continuing back in the shoe, you get to that classic Ultraboost midfoot cage in matte white. And then moving even farther back in the shoe, you get to the Ultraboost heel counter, also in matte white, which has the Ultraboost text in black and silver. Then moving down on the shoe, you get to the namesake of the Ultraboost sneaker, the full length boost midsole. In 2015, this boost midsole blew my mind. It was the most comfortable shoe I had ever put on my foot. But not only that, when paired with the prime knit upper, this shoe is the most comfortable thing I had ever worn. And honestly, even five years later, I still think the Ultra Boost is one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn, if not still the most comfortable. Boost is an incredible cushioning technology. It feels great underfoot. I personally prefer it for lifestyle wear because it's just a little bit too bouncy for me when I'm running, but overall, it's one of the best cushions I've ever worn. And then finally, moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this black continental rubber outsole with this bright neon green torsion system in the midfoot. The 2020 Ultra Boost 1.0 in triple white might be one of the most low key releases of the year, but honestly, it's one of my favorite. This is just such an incredible sneaker in such a great colorway, and I'm so excited that Adidas brought it back. And if you've never worn a pair of Ultra Boost 1.0s, I definitely suggest grabbing this pair for yourself. But now, I would love to know your thoughts on the 2020 Ultra Boost 1.0 in triple white, and whether you plan on grabbing a pair for yourself, or maybe whether you had a pair back in 2015. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.